No, no, no. I, I, I just think it must be possible. And people, people mistook that as you know, wine and cheese. Like, but I'm thinking of like one product. Someone must have made that. It must be a thing, obviously. Uh, uh, let's not go too deep into that right now. But like um, infused in like a can that you can just, you know, something like that. I'm just, I'm thinking there is a future in this product <laughs> somewhere. That's that. That was my main point. Um, Tai Lu and Cloud Nine in a best of one here. And everyone's saying Cloud9 are the definite favorites. Looking at the history, you have to agree with that. I am just excited to be seeing Tai Lu at the big stage. I want to see more Asian teams coming and play. And hopefully they will have improved overnight. They really need to step it up here. They need to come up with something big. The last time these two teams faced, looks like it was I by Power Masters. And uh, Cloud9 16 owed them. So uh, that's something to keep in mind here. Tai Lu, they're going up against a team that 16 0 dumpstered them and Cloud9 are going up against a team that they 16 would so that so is a little bit of a mental edge. Everything is an improvement for Tai Lu. One round, right. they would have done it. There's a positive edge there. They have a smoke, they have a Molotov and some flashbangs here, and Shroud is alone on the bomb side. Now it is Shroud, so if he gets a good headshot first in, that will be a nice start, but instead he's down to four health, he's gonna go down. Attacker will take him out, a nice start here for the Chinese team now. Four versus five, and they can't really easily get in. They still have that Molotov. Captain Moe's in the back line. They've orchestrated this whole round for the afterplant. They're ready to firebomb anyone trying to defuse sound. This is some next level play coming out of Tyloo. Just wait for this. Even if they get all the four kills here, Cloud9 on the bomb site, they still have to deal with the Molotov and they don't have the equipment for it. Fancy gonna get one. Somebody takes down nothing. And now it's all over. Automatic goes down to Fancy. A well played round for Tyloo. And already, as we said, Samla. An improvement from last time. Such a finely crafted round. And you can tell, you know, thank you for pointing out the Molotov, right? You know, every step of the way, it obviously hinges on getting that first opening kill, and Shroud getting instinct certainly helped them. But Tyloo, you saw it, they just all fall into positions for the after plant. They all know which angle they're watching. It also seems to fall in together so nicely for Tyloo there that Cloud9, they were helpless. They couldn't really get in there to take the fight with Tyloo to begin with. There was no weakness in the setup. So a very nice start here for Tyloo. You're right. 1 0 lead. They pick up the T side pistol. And now it's up to Cloud9, going for some aggression mid. Skadoodle's got the scout. He'll be watching from window, but Stewie and Automatic both waiting up close. Automatic with the CZ as well. If they catch somebody out here, it could get nasty. Smoke is there, going to make life a little bit tricky for Skadoodle. But at the same time, the fact that he fires that scout, I wonder if that couldn't have been a trigger for Tyloo to go and move. Because when you hear that shot come out from the scout, you know that there was someone in the window and that now they're falling back. So mm -hmm. it could have tricked someone into running right into Stewie and Automatic, who are waiting in the middle. I mean, this is just a tough situation for Cloud9 because obviously this is a loser match. They're both 0-1, and Cloud9 yesterday, it wasn't an easy loss either. They lost in overtime to FaZe on Mirage. So, you know, they're going for a repeat here on Mirage, Cloud9, which is always a bit of a gamble when, you're, when you've already played it once in the tournament. Tai Lu, they, they, they have a history of studying their opponents, of anti stratting their opponents. And so Cloud9 are really just gonna have to get some headshots, I think, to try and destabilize Tai Lu because if it goes according to plan for Tai Lu, they're gonna get run over. Leg shot from Skadoodle. Can he get the follow-up as well? They've already got the one kill automatic in charge of that. Ooh, nice shot from Captain Mo taking down Skadoodle. That's as good as it gets. Four versus three, though. The bomb is only now just going down, and Captain Mo caught reloading. Shroud could have almost had that kill with the Deagle. He's going to go for the fight again. But he's taking too long right now. He's going to get hunted mid-reload. Captain Mo not missing a beat, and somebody will take down nothing. And it's automatic. One on three. He gets the kill. I mean, look at the health that's left here on Tyloo. That could have been an awful round, but it isn't. They win it. Thanks to Captain Mo on that triple kill. That's the important bit, right? Captain Mo coming through for his team, but still, you've invested quite a bit in the round and you lose three players. You keep both rifles alive, so you do have that going for you, but that's not a, a feel bad situation for Cloud9. They should be like, okay, you know, we did some work. We made sure that their economy isn't going to just start taking off. And now we're, we're going to go for that hard eco, but we should be feeling a bit better going into the fourth round when we'll be able to get the rifles and the nades. So who do you think will win this now? The, the, the desk gave its prediction. We never gave ours. Fancy is going to be running into the bomb side. Looks like this is going to be one of those fairly easy rounds, even if Cloud9 has the stack. So I'm going to I'm gonna have you make your prediction after this one. Fancy, a quick double, and then only nothing getting a kill here. Trying to escape. He's got the AK. And that will be the end of it. Triple for Fancy with the MAC-10. Hmm. I do kind of want to go on an, out on a limb here, just because Cloud9 played Mirage yesterday. It, you don't really get the feel that this team is at the place right now where they're able to make changes to their strategies, to their setups, to the point where they might catch a team that's done their homework off guard. True. And Tyloo, I mean, I mean, with a strong start like this on T side, they've got an aggressive CT side as well. 
I kind of want to just say Tyler are going to take it, to be frank. Like, looking at some of the details here, I feel like Tyler have a good chance of taking it over Cloud9, especially if they're, they're able to just stop Cloud9 from getting any kind of momentum going. I mean, Stu yeah, watching yesterday, it, Cloud9 was so heavily reliant on Stewie to get anything done. And if you can shut Stewie down here, Cloud9... Woo! Oh, my nice shot there from Scott. That is one hell of a way to get started. Somebody out of the round attacker actually caught jumping in the back there. Gets taken out. Skadoodle doesn't even need the AWP. It's so refreshing to see Skadoodle actually doing work on this team. Seems like it's been a while. He does go down to DD at the end, but I think it's not really of any significance any longer. Two on four at the moment. DD rushing into Catwalk. Going to get taken out by Automatic. Fancy best he can do now is more damage. That's a nice flick to take down nothing. That's very impressive, but again, one on three. He's got the bomb, and he has a minute. I mean, Sky yesterday, we saw some great aggression out of him. He's usually been criticized as being a bit of a turret kind of player where you just put him in one place and then he kind of stays there regardless of, you know, the circumstances. He'll just stay and hold that angle, that sort of thing. We did see a lot of uh, change of positioning from him yesterday. So, I mean, good to see him landing two shots at least to start things off. We'll see when he gets that op. Fancy now with 35 seconds. And he spotted the man underpass. So I'm wondering if that's why he wants to head towards the B side. He's maybe thinking that he knows where one of these guys is. Only thing is he has no idea that automatic has already rotated through kitchen as well. Great headshot on one, but you're right. The real problem is automatic. He's going to go for the bomb plant, but he can't make it all the way through. That's still pretty impressive. You know, one on four, he takes two people down and nearly gets the bomb plant. So he makes it an expensive round for the Cloud9 roster. Tai Lu still able to buy mm -hmm. in this round. That's the really important factor. We'll see if they can keep going. Just know that Karsa has got to be feeling a nuts amount of pressure or fr frustration right now. We have the Valve coaching rules in place here, obviously for the major qualifier Valve event. And um, he, he's very limited. You know, they, that was what was uh, communicated earlier on the desk is the fact that, you know, he does a lot of the homework. He's, he's got an insane work drive where he just stays up late to watch demos and prepare the team. But he was also very involved in the calling of the team as well. The fact that he can't just instantly communicate to his teammates what to do. We have definitely seen Tyler struggle with that. Already action in mid, though. Look at this aggression coming from Cloud9. Three very quick kills. Somebody able to bring back one, two, but it's still so close. Man advantage now for Cloud9. Look at that prediction spray coming out of somebody as well. And Captain Mo hitting a headshot on Stewie somehow. We've ended up in a two-on-two. -two. The bomb, though, is miles away. But you see how as soon as he finishes the spray on the player in connector, he turns around. He's ready for someone to come out a window. We need a replay now. That's actually very cool and very well done. Skadoodle and uh, Shroud have grouped up in connector here. They are expecting that the push will eventually be for A. Somebody actually going to walk back through T-Spawn. He was looking like someone who wanted to make it through the middle, but instead... He's going to have a hard time getting out here, I think. He does have a Molotov. I mean, he's got... Maybe with a nicely placed Molotov, he could buy time for himself to get in and get the bomb down. But it won't be easy. If that bomb... If he dies and that bomb doesn't drop on the site, this round is over. Yeah. This is... Oh, man. Nobody there from Cloud9. He's going to plant for CT because he knows that his teammate is over there who's held the angle. Knows that nobody... He doesn't have to worry about anything. That kind of narrows it down now. Cloud9 going to be rotating through jungle and somebody hoping to get up into Palace with that Molotov and he's just barely going to manage it. I don't even know if Cloud9 saw that. Shroud, I think, was just a little late. He, got, he does get a smoke to block him off, but Captain Mo is still alive. Still a 1v2 scenario now for Cloud9 going into the retake because they know that somebody's up in Palace blocked off, it looks like. Does he know the angle for the Molotov? That's the really interesting thing. He's just going to be hiding under smoke. That's Captain Mo going down. Somebody hasn't got the Molotov primed. He's going to be walking right in, puts it in. They cancel the defuse. What's happening? They could have probably just held it, and that would have been it. Now a lot of time is wasted. A shroud running onto the Molotov. Somebody's going to be going down. The clock, last possible second. Oh, he gets the defuse. Shroud making it happen for his team. He actually had to step into the fire while it was still burning to get that defuse. That's a real sacrifice. That could have gone horribly wrong. Unbelievable. That's just how close it can get sometimes. Yeah, Shroud. Look at this. Last couple of ticks. He timed it perfectly. What a play. And that, I mean, that's just great teamwork there between the two of them, between Shroud and Skadoodle. Skadoodle basically watching his teammates back the entire time. Wow. I mean, <laughs> that could have gone horribly wrong. The thing is, if someone is already diffusing and they have 100, and I realize he didn't have 100% health, but if he had 100% health and someone's already diffusing, if you throw the Molotov on them while they've already tapped the defuse, they will get that defuse on them. Molotov won't kill them if they have the kit before the defuse is in. That's how it works. So they could have probably kept doing it the first time around. The fact that they got off the defuse is a huge risk for Cloud9. They could have very easily lost that round. Still, tense 
game early on here. 3-2. Cloud9 continuously winning the... Well, they win these two rounds, but they're down to very few members. You know, two two people alive every round. That's expensive. Yeah, I mean, two rounds in a row, but this is still a buy coming out here from Tyloo. This is a, this is definitely playing with fire, but they don't want Cloud9 to get to the point where they're going to have the money to full buy. They know that Cloud9 are very low right now on economy, and so Tyloo looking to take advantage of that. They took a timeout expressly for this purpose so that Karsa could communicate with this team. So perhaps there's a little bit of an edge here that they're looking to exploit. Automatic again going for aggression and <laughs> no chance for somebody. That's one of the rifles down, in fact. Another best start. Stewie here burning alive, though, trying to get out from that fire. He's going to run into the bomb site. Even if he had gone down under, he would have still got a little bit of damage, I think. Nothing out in the open, overextending, goes down to Captain Mo. But Stewie with the second kill of the round for himself and Fancy. Just the UMP. Things are looking much better for Cloud9 in this round. If they can just make sure that no one else goes down and Skadoodle in charge of that. They survive with four members and finally they break the Chinese economy here and are going to be... Oh, actually, I thought for a moment they would buy. Just upgrading some pistols, that's fine. Yeah, maybe a half buy. Captain Mo sitting, he's got 4,000, he's going to go for the Deagle. So they're, they're, they're still ecoing here, Tai Lu, but they're looking to upgrade just a little bit. And, well, I mean, that was an excellent read coming in. Don't know who made it, obviously, because it does seem like there's a little bit of a... Uh, I mean, Stewie is still calling for Cloud9, but obviously people can chime in. Whatever the read came in that they wanted that this was going to be an A hit, four players there for Cloud9. So Tyloo just ran into the blender there. Not a whole lot they can hope to do. But now, I mean, Cloud9 obviously fully equipped. Nice flash to force Skadoodle off the angle, though, but it's going to be automatic once again on short. Reigning Supreme, two kills for him before Captain Mo finally steps in, and Didi gets the headshot on Skadoodle as well. Yeah, time for Cloud9 to cool down. I think... They saw all those pistols in the middle and they thought, all right, it's a free for all. Let's just go and hunt for some kills. And got to be very careful with that kind of mentality. Maybe, just maybe, Shroud can actually get a kill in this game over at the B bomb site. He's, I mean, it's not even his fault. He's just mm. been at B alone and bored for a very long time. This actually happens a lot if you're a B player on, on Mirage. You only see action when the A defense has failed and you have to go and sort things out. So then a lot of the time you can't do anything. You're too late to the party. Or they just, whenever they come B, maybe you get a couple of kills, but it could be a rough time. Yeah, that's that's very true. I mean, apart from the pistol round, and obviously the later rotation to B, Tyloo have just not hit B site whatsoever. Fancy close, might be able to catch out nothing, but nothing will find the kill on his teammate first, and nothing just rains. Well, look at that. Three quick kills coming in for nothing. The cleanup, excellent control there from nothing to keep his cool. If they had gone simultaneously there, nothing wouldn't have been able to do that. That's a bit unfortunate. 3-4 is the scoreline. That's four rounds in a row for Cloud9. Let's see what the T-side can do here. They have the AWP on Captain Mo, but Skadoodle has his on the other side, and he's playing a good game right now. 7-0-5 oh, for him, definitely stepping up. I mean, he's been suffering a lot of criticism, Skadoodle, for the level that he's been bringing right now to Cloud9. But you're right, I mean, yesterday definitely hit some shots in the first game. And, well, going into it now, look at that, the aggression from Ska. That's not what we were used to saying from Skadoodle at all. The boost in mid, are you kidding? Very well done. That's actually something that Kenny used to do back when he was yeah. much more confident. He's very good at making the job, Kenny has. Fancy's gone down after taking out nothing. Still a four on three. And Stewie jumping up on the ticket booth here, looking for a kill in the middle. Can he find the angle for it? He's a bit worried, and I don't blame him. If he goes down here, then that's the end of the A bomb site. Automatic sneaking in as he spotted that attacker. Yet he, oh no, what? He doesn't get that kill in spite of the fact that he had the better angle. Started firing mid air. Captain Mo gonna be taking out Stewie, and that's it. Shroud down and out of the round. And again, like we were just talking about, Shroud is just peacefully chilling in the B bomb site for a long time. And only when things fail at A, he sort of has to move over there. It, it's just not a fun position to be in. But 4 4 is the scoreline. That's a big round for Tyloo. Yeah, and I mean, you got to give it to Scott. This is this is the key to, to opping, essentially, is confidence. More so than in almost anything else. Like, opping, you just have to know you're going to land the shot. You have to be able to make the plays. That's where you see the very best really shine. JW and Kenny in their prime. Fallen is another opper who just loves to look for fights. And so, well, Scott, this time around, more passive angle, and he hits the flick onto Didi. So, man advantage here for Cloud9. But this is such a key round between both of these teams. They're tied up 4-4, four to four, but Cloud9 have spent all of their money, all of their bank on this round. If Tyloo are able to try and fight their way back and win this one, Cloud9 are going to be in dire straits. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Neither team has really any money to work with here, so a lot rides on this. Nothing, just a pistol in the corner, but he still wins the fight. Good follow-up from attacker, but they're a man down, and 
They're spread out all across the map. Fancy top mid, attacker connector, and Captain Mo looking for a sneak peek over here. Going to be dropping automatic, very low on health, but not enough for the kill. Nice angle from Shroud, though. That was perfect. Mo just walked right into it, blindsided. So now it's attacker and Fancy. Last two alive here for Tyloo in a two on four. And what you mean, Tyloo's economy isn't exactly flourishing either, so. They need to get some job. They need to get some kind of impact going here. Skadoodle going to miss his shot initially, and then that sets it up for Stewie. Good two layer defense here on that A site for Cloud9. That one two combo really working well for him. And now that leaves an attacker, well, I mean, stuck. He's in a box, in a triangle. Yeah, this is definitely not easy. And now they just spotted him out. <laughs> Long range spray coming through. Can spray through that box on Stewie, but um, he's getting the angle ever so slightly off. Now. They're coming for him, mid-reload, automatic with the perfect timing. Team H from Cloud9, everyone helping out, and five for the scoreline, and another break here for the Tyloo economy. A lot of money on on Didi, but the rest, oh, they're gonna force it anyway. Wow, it's the hero all being brought out on Didi, and then the rest with the buy. I mean, actually, I kind of appreciate this, because if you're an underdog here, and Tyloo definitely are, like you were pointing out, 16-0 last time these two played. Yeah. I feel like you've got to try something like this. If you win a round like this right now, you know Cloud9 are going to be massively tilted. You have to be feeling pretty frustrated as well. Okay, now he's got the angle. There's the shot. Woo! That was so close to getting a team shot in there. Captain Mo just walks right in front of him, barely dodges it. But still, actually, Skadoodle clever. Just goes for a shoulder peek as well. Not sure what he was up against. Doesn't take the risk, doesn't go for the full peek. And not only does he survive, it gives them, it tips them that there's more than just pistols on the map, you know? That's a lot of information to have early on. And maybe as a result, at least the possibility is that Cloud9 are now playing very defensively. They fall back all the way here. Shroud, though, is up in apartments or in the hallways here. He's not seeing anyone yet. Yeah, this is actually very aggro, but it's good to see that Cloud9 on CT side are fishing for information. Mirage, one of those maps where you do have more options on the CT side to play the extremities, to try and figure out what the, tier, the, what the T side are up to. And so, I mean, you know, Shroud up there in B-Halls. Now he's able to communicate to his teammates. Nothing really happening over here, but that hasn't changed up the setup too much. He still has automatic there backing him up on the site itself. So Cloud9, despite this, aren't really trying to cheat. And yeah, Shroud, he sees movement. He backs off immediately, buys more time with that smoke. 45 seconds left on the clock here, and Tyloo's set to go for the B-site. They need to move. 40 seconds, you're right. This is getting really tricky. That's Nothing. The... Oh, no. That's the bomb drop. Now they have to go back and pick it up. This is not the best time to be uh, picking that up in the middle with 30 seconds left. Didi has gone down. Captain Mo doing his best to bring them back in the game here. But he's going to be alone. One versus three. And 20 seconds left. He has got the bomb. He needs a good kill, first of all. Skadoodle going to be the first target there. This is doable. One on two. He's got every chance because nothing is so low as well. And nothing, just rotating onto short, out in the open as well, versus the AK. Captain Mo can definitely do this if he hits the shot. Stewie holding on the angle, but there's the first shot. Done. Information for Stewie. There's the headshot! Mo does it! Quad kill for him in the 1v2 clutch. 1v3 clutch to get it done. Sick work. That puts Tyloo back in the fight. 5-5 five to five now, and Cloud9 just can't get their feet under him. As soon as that bomb drops in the middle, that's panic mode for the whole team. And the fact that nothing gets back, because they were in win they were in that in the vent room, they could have maybe got the kill on him, but he actually makes it back. This clutch is really impressive. Brutal. And again, a reminder that, that was a big gamble for Tyloo to buy in that round. It paid off, and now Skadoodle gonna be going down. It's a save round coming out of Cloud9. They can't really do anything else, and they are trying to defend this A bomb site. Stewie in the corner? Not gonna happen. Mm, very quick. I like it. Lack of respect from Tyloo. They've got a read on the situation right now. They know that there's no money left over here on Cloud 9 side, and so they're willing to just go for the aggression straight onto the A site. Easy plant for them. That leaves Cloud 9 with two players left alive here. Shroud and Automatic. Both have got Deegs. Both can get the one Deegs in. But Tyloo really shouldn't be challenging at all. They know that they've got exactly T-Spawn already cleared out, Palace already cleared out. They have their avenue of escape open. No need to go hunting. Only attacker should be out there because he's got the MAC-10. But the rifles in the op, all of you guys play safe. Back off through T-Spawn and save your guns. Don't even give them a chance. And that's it. Attacker should be the only death here for Tyloo. Yeah, I agree. There's the, the economy just doesn't support the kind of hunt that they would normally go on if they had, you know, seven, 8,000 in the bank. They definitely don't. So, yeah, the scoreboard will show all of that here. Cloud9, though, after the lost bonus, they have enough money to buy on, for like, three out of five, but even Stewie's right at the edge of what you'd want on the CT side. This is a kind of a problem for them, because on the other hand, 
if they don't make this buy happen, like they're going to risk it here. But if they don't, they're giving a lot of the first half away to the to Tai Lu. I agree. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't want to let Tai Lu get up to seven or eight rounds on the T side of Mirage. This is still a very CT. This is still a CT sided map, where you know you expect to see nine six, you expect to see ten five for the CT side. So Cloud9, though, they're low. Skadoodle, again, with the challenge in mid, he really does want to take over this mid-window area, perhaps figuring out that that early smoke isn't going down to block him off. But there's the shot. Fancy ready for him. And Scott, that was a glass cannon off from him, so he didn't lose any utility, but still, man advantage here for Tyloo. That's such a good challenge. If you smoke out the window, it's not impossible. It's sort of likely that the AWP in window will eventually go for it. And Stewie trying to bring it back for his team. He's not just out of his mind. If you're playing a 4v5, a lot of the time, especially in Mirage, you have to make some sort of play happen. Now, they're in a 3v5. I mean, I think for Cloud9 as well. Like, st they're still, uh, after watching their first map yesterday when they were when they lost a phase, I mean, it still felt a lot like Stewie was the, the show, the playmaker. Like, they still heavily rely on him to get in the fight and to make something happen for Cloud9. But Automatic has also definitely stepped up. He's only going to get the two kills, so it's still a man advantage here for Tai Lu. But he is able to actually try and get Cloud9 back into this round somehow. Shocking that Captain Mo uh, didn't pick up that kill uh, when he when he was creeping up there. That should have been a, a kill easily. Because Tai Lu did the right thing. They're waiting for Cloud9 to make the mistake. They just didn't find the kill when it happened. Now, nothing with an AWP. That's something we don't see every day. Can he save his teammates? He's actually going to be looking the wrong way. Just as they move out, he's going to swap out a jungle. And now when he tries to get back in, the Molotov is there. Does he spot him out? He tries to get the flick shot in. Now the bomb will be going down. Attacker there. Could have put it down. Shroud and nothing. This would be one hell of a retake. That would be a monster retake. They do have some utility on Shroud. They have the smoke. So as soon as they figure out where that... Nope, he's just going to go ahead and commit it and messes it up, in fact. Does kind of land close to the bomb, and so they do have an angle to work with. Nothing going to check. Tries the wall bank. Not going to happen. Somebody's there to get the flank. And Shroud now needs to do some incredible work, but it's just not meant to be. Attacker will find him out in the open, and it's a 7-5 to five score line now with Tyloo in the lead on T-side. But you're right. I mean, Oh, it's that, fancy, yeah. That was a long spray as well. That should have been a kill for Fancy, because actually he's playing this perfectly. This, it's very smart for them just to wait and, and see. Mm -hmm. When he doesn't get the kill, it gets a bit awkward. But this is the thing. Cloud9, they had saved, to, well, they had sort of forced into this round. Now they're going to be saving again here. This is not looking good at the moment. Stewie at six kills, Shroud is only at three. I know we were making excuses for him earlier, but now it's starting to become a problem. They need to be more proactive. Turn and see if they can maybe fight the top mid here. It's 7-5 in favor of Tai Lu. And they look to be winning this fight in the middle once again. Fancy getting a heal. DD with a double. And Shroud and Automatic 2 on 5. This is just a beautiful first half from Tai Lu. I'm loving it. everything about this. A nice spray there from Automatic. He's got the AK now. All right, a lot of shouting. Tech getting very vocal. I mean, I like it. Keep the comms, keep, keep the comms going. I'd be more concerned if they were super quiet, right? All right, get the comms going. You know, keep the game tight. I think Shroud heard them running underpass, so he can call that out to Automatic, who's going to be in the right position. But with no body armor, it means if there's any extended spraying going on here, he will lose that fight immediately. And just like that, the aim punch too much to handle. And Shroud in the middle. Could he maybe catch DD? He's looking the wrong way, and I think he made some noise there. DD hasn't heard him. Nice hand, Sean. <laughs> it's just so clean when Shroud hits his shots like that. Just... No need to spray. No need to spray. He's going to get that headshot. But still, two kills. Decent enough eco coming in here for Cloud9. If Shroud somehow finds another one, that would be monster. But I really think that Tyloo need to keep their cool. Yes. Uh, they Again, the money is not great. There's no reason to be throwing away too many rifles here. Maybe Shroud can catch them when the bomb goes up as they sneak by here. That's not impossible. They will have to make it out of the kitchen eventually. Well, actually, I mean, you can survive where Fancy is, so it doesn't have to run too much further. Timing for Shroud. They're just running for it here, and he survives the bomb blast. Going to go down to attacker, so 8-5. Tai Lu now winning four rounds in a row with no answer for the American team. They're taking off. They are taking off. And they've got a read. They've got a clear read on the situation now. It's Cloud9 who are trying to struggle back into this. I mean, we're going to see if Skadoodle continues. He's got his AWP. We're going to see if he can continue to take it mid. We think that yesterday we saw a little bit more diversity from him, that he was taking it up into Palace. He was also scoping up Pit. I mean, right now, he just keeps taking it window. So we'll see if he's actually going to change up his angle of attack. And it looks like it. Connector peak from him this time. I like it, Ska. Don't be too predictable. Try and change it up. 
But Tyloo, in the meantime, they have, they're having nothing to do with mid. They're all set up outside of A, and they can go for the straight smoke execute if they want to. They have the nades for it. And look at Automatic, again, making plays in the middle, just moving up, making sure, because Skadoodle will have already called out that he hasn't seen anyone, and there was no smoke or Molotov coming in to clear out his position. So I like this play from Automatic. He's really trying to be proactive. And look at the setup. As a result, they have, if we bring up the map, you can see everybody's nearly near this A bomb site. This is going to be a rough round for Tyloo if they try and push in. They have all the grenades, and they're already raining in. Going to try and cut up the bomb site with the smokes, and now come the Molotovs as well. Nothing. Standing hard on this side. He's the first point of contact when the when they push in on the other side. Captain Mo ready and waiting to come out. Nothing. He's trying to hide at the edge of it. They're taking a long time right now, Tyloo, but they're planting right next to nothing. And they get it through without anyone going down. Automatic goes down. That was the flank coming in from behind. That was a huge plan from Automatic. And it doesn't work out. DD with a headshot on nothing. This is not looking good. Cloud9, they can't let go this round. They've already lost one match in this qualifier. Losing this one would be a nightmare for them. Attacker goes down. That's Stewie finally stepping up and picking up a kill. It's a three on... Well, it was a three on three. Now it's just Skadoodle left, and he's been found out. He can't get this defuse in. They're coming in from the middle as well. It's done. Two health left, and it's going to be a ninth round for Tyloo. What a round. Oh, somebody's going to cut him off. He is close enough. Somebody knows. Oh, this is going to be the shot. Good night, Scar. Ah, oh, that's painful. You see it, it's inevitable. Wow. The, the fact that they get in there and get the bomb plant down. Again, if we replay that round, Cloud9 had four members on the A-bomb side, and none of them picked up a kill before the bomb plant, and that's just almost unbelievable. That, that speaks, I think, of some hesitation on cloud Nine's side. I have to say, there was, I mean, that was a methodical take. All of the nades getting used by Tylu, agonizingly slow as well. You could just tell nothing. He's just, he's just there on the edge. He's like, when are they coming? I mean, all the smokes have been up. Some of them for like 10 seconds almost, and they're still not there. They're just taking their time, Tylu, checking every angle with Molotovs, with flashes. I mean, that that was a mechanical kind of play coming through, just every piece. Tyloo up 9-5. What's really absurd is that normally you play that round if you are ecoing and you buy you know, some smokes, you try and get the forward smoke to get the plant inside. Mm -hmm. People don't normally play that round when you have full rifles. <laughs> so I think that's why nothing is waiting. He's thinking, well, surely they're not going to be planting this, the bomb yet because I'm still here, you know? So It's I true. I mean, that, I mean, that's almost like a Pronax style plant as well with the smokes, you know, just like put the smoke down, plant in the smoke. Doesn't matter if you kill anybody or not. Just like, what? We're seeing some OG stuff coming out here. DD taking a bit of damage there. Somebody, actually the one taking the damage, it looked like DD was, but Skadoodle and somebody trading. A lot of action mid, and eventually Attacker finds a shot on nothing, and that was that connector. Automatic, he was successful at the beginning of the first half with these short pushes, trying to pick up the kills, but right now he's a bit too, uh, bit too worried about sticking it out there. Not gonna happen. Last round of the half here. Tyler have already done an amazing job getting to this level now. They need to close this out. Because, I am I mean, if Cloud9 starts to pick up speed at any point here, they have players like Stu in Automatic who can take off and just still come back and win the game. But right now, it's looking fantastic. Stewie over at the A-bomb site. And we'll see if he could maybe do anything. He's got the UMP and a flashbang. It's not the best uh, arsenal to do anything with, but he's the only one here. And actually, it looks like they're going to try and even make some noise over at B. Taking a lot of time to figure out exactly what they want to do right now. 40 seconds. The bomb is now being brought back on DD while somebody and attacker are going to throw grenades into A. Let's look at the map and see how many people are lured over here. Yeah, that's going to be curious because Automatic is pushed top mid right now. Captain Mo going to be able to make it out. Although he does look like he wants to try and get in here, perhaps for some kind of flank. Attacker is making the jump into jungle. Not going to hit it. Skadoodle still alive in CT, but Captain Mo finds a shot on Automatic. That's the mid presence gone. Attacker takes Stewie down. They're fully sold, but it doesn't even matter. This is the biggest fake, the best kind of fake. They go to the A site with three guys and kill everybody on A. The bomb is on B. Cloud9, yeah. they just, that is the best fake. That is exactly how it's supposed to go. It's so, it's, I mean, it's just beautiful play here. Tyloo really reading them well at the moment, and also, even if somebody in Attacker hadn't had all that success in the A-bomb site, there would have been the backup plan in B, right? The bomb would have gone down in the middle of that attack anyway. So very well done. 10-5 in the first half in favor of Tai Lu, who we have to remind you got 16 owed by Cloud9 the last time they met. Mm -hmm. Now is a different story. And if they win this pistol round, I don't know what Cloud9 can do. Even if Cloud9 win the pistol, it'll be an uphill battle. Um, but a very interesting game nonetheless. Somebody at 15 kills, 
Captain Mo at 14. I see somebody here. Automatic has been doing a lot of the work, the majority of the work. He's been very aggressive in the middle as well. His ADR is certainly up there. I, yes, exactly. I mean, that's that's the main thing. Automatic has kind of taken over that playmaker role in a way, right? You know, it's just like because basically Stewie's calling, he's kind of taken over Slemmy's role, and now it's Automatic to the one who wants to try and get in there, try and take the fights. Only issue is he's getting slapped around right now. I mean, yes, he's doing some fights, but his team is trailing five rounds, and now they're going over to the T side, Cloud9. This pistol is so important, and let's remind you, Tyloo had an excellent T side pistol. They picked up the first half pistol. Now we're going over to the CT side, where Cloud9 have now got to just pull a rabbit out of the hat. They have to come up with something completely new, because you cannot use something uh, like a strategy you've used in the past versus Tyloo. They're just too well prepared. And is this... Is this Okay, hold on. It's a technical pause. Is it a technical pause or a tactical? Yeah, I think it's a technical one. They're just they're just sorting something out, I reckon. But um, where I'm looking, I'm not seeing anybody, any admins. Look at the um, look at the body language here on Cloud9 for a moment. Like they 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 could just be a little bit more animated. All right, just a halftime timeout. Fair enough. Three minutes and a half time. All right. Oh, they're allowed three minutes and a half time, and this has got to be Tyler. This has got to be Carson just having a little bit of a chat with his boys. Okay, guys, this is the kind of pistol round that they like to run. Because he was doing a lot of talking. That's why I was almost thinking this was a tactical pause coming in from Tyler, where they just want to extend the halftime to have more time to talk. Look at this. The, I mean, the, this game is not over yet. Yet at least half of Cloud9, maybe more, are, are sort of exhibiting the same body language where they don't look at all animated. They don't look like they're excited. There's just, you know, th this is a problem, you know? And you, I mean, even if you're faking it, you should still try and fake it, you know? Because maybe you pull some teammate along, maybe everyone plays just 5% better. I mean, it's. I think if you go into a second half and you look like this, it's sort of signaling that you already think it's done. That should never be the mentality. Oh, uh, this is, that's exactly right. I mean, this is where you need to be shouting. You need to just get fired up. Even if you're behind, just get fired up, try to. You got to get that adrenaline going so you can go into the fight here and take it over because Tyloo right now, they're sitting pretty. 10-5 lead for them going into the second half and now they're on the CT side, Tyloo. And they have quite a presence on short. Attacker and somebody ready to shut them down. DD is an underpass as well. This could get nasty. Cloud9 could get collapsed on, but Stewie finds one headshot on DD. That's the man in mid dead. Somebody good headshot attacker as well. Still alive over at that B bomb site. He needs to win the next fight. Actually, he's going to be going down to automatic. Now attacker. Dropped by Automatic and Fancy, the only one left. One versus three, trying to charge in, but Automatic will take care of business. That's a double kill for him. He's clocking in at 19 right now. He is trying to drag Cloud9 back into this game. He's maybe the only one yet who hasn't given up on that team. And now it's 10 to six. That was a very, very odd fight for the two people playing on Catwalk because they had people coming in behind them. They had mm -hmm. people coming in through middle and you can tell they just, they weren't quite sure where to focus their attention on. Yeah, it was chaotic, definitely. If Mo wins the fight versus the man flanking, that's that's a totally different situation, right? But the fact that Mo gets shot in the face, that just forces Fancy and that's just, I mean, that's where it pretty much all falls apart. So a tough break there for Tyloo, but good on Cloud9 to start strong here in the second half. That's the pistol round one for them on their T side. Six to 10, still trailing, but you can see now they have the rifles. And really you want to get one over to Automatic as quickly as possible. Let him get some headshots. A bit of a stack over at the B-bomb side, which I don't, I don't particularly mind. I think this is a, a worthwhile risk to take. Fancy's in middle and Captain Mo over at the A-bomb site, but none of them can really do anything to defend A. Smokes are suggesting that this could be a B push. Mm -hmm. Bomb is still in mid. It can rotate up to short as well. And automatic, being pretty thorough about it. Somebody taking quite a bit of damage over on B. But they do have Fancy over on CT side of Murder Hole as well. So he can rotate over towards that B site very quickly. But that bomb is rotating back over towards A, Anders. This could yeah. really wind up with Cloud9 collapsing through. Automatic is now going through ladder room. He can get into jungle fairly quickly. Shroud still holding over at Ganda, or rather at Delpan. Close to connector, he can make his way in. But this is this is where it starts to get just a little nervous because 40 seconds left does not leave you a whole lot of time if you're Cloud9. You really want to find a kill right now. Yeah, I mean, what could screw this round up is if Captain Mo somehow gets the kill or nothing and Skadoodle both. Then the time limit would really be the problem. But that's a big ask right now. He's got the 5 7 and the armor for it, but still, they're all coming right here. 23 seconds. He's going to go for one. There's a bomb drop. But again, because there's no backup, he needed to get more than just the one kill. They still have time for the bomb plant here. I mean, it's not risk-free for Cloud9 to play this way, but it works out this time. Yeah, it does, but you're right. It is cutting it just a little bit close. 
Nothing. We'll find the shot on Fancy. That was in CT. There's somebody over there, but he's already been lit up a bit. He's down to 19 HP. And this really should be a situation where Tyloo kind of just sit back and wait, hope to hope to find a kill, hope for Cloud9 to make the mistake that they can take advantage of and maybe save a rifle, or go for this option, which is basically save the stuff that you've got from this round, the investment. They've got $3,300 spent this round, so you might as well save that and carry it over into the next one. So this is, this is turning into exactly the match that I wanted, though, Andrews. Scrappy. At Cloud9, they themselves were the victims of a, of a comeback, you know? They were ahead, what, 10-1 in their match yesterday, and then they ended up losing it anyway. So now <laughs> they get a chance to, to actually do that just in reverse almost. I'd be very impressed if they could make it back. Um, not because they lack the skills or anything, it's just because of the way they, they sort of looked like a team that had already given up. But how long can Automatic keep this going? The, the only closest player to Automatic right now on his team is Skadoodle and 11 kills. But Automatic is 20. Somebody else really needs to step it up here. Yeah, and usually, you know, eyes turn to Shroud, eyes turn to nothing. But you're right. Between, I mean, eyes turn to Stewie as well. But they're not done yet. There's still plenty of time for them to wake up in the second half. And while Tyloo, this is just another kind of round where you kind of have to just grit your teeth. You're on pistols again. No money spent this round. It's a hard eco looking to that 19th round. And so far, Cloud9, well, it's looking like back-to-back -back A hits for them. Fancy winning a fight with the USP. That's always annoying if you're Stewie. But um, three versus four. And a comfortable bomb plant coming in here for all the American side. Nothing, maybe too much of a fight there against the two players coming in. Still should be a good situation. The grenade not going to catch anyone. Would have been fun though, but DD and attacker, they've saved the Galil. Can they actually make a run for it? I mean, I think that's worth it if you can save the Galil. Especially, look at this. I mean, that's, yeah, save the Galil. That's another, is it not an AK that got dropped as well by Stewie? No, that was a, that was the like Stewie's Galil, wasn't it? So, yeah. still, I mean, if you can get Cloud9 to spend some money going into the next round, that's still all right. I mean, you didn't spend anything in this round, so two kills is still fairly solid work. DD gonna run right into automatic, so continues to uh, you know give him some some feel good moments there. Pat his stats a little bit more. He's up to 22 kills now, automatic. Whereas somebody is still leading the way for Tyloo, 16 kills on his side. So now we get into it, 10 to 8, the 19th round here for Tyloo. The, there is an AWP in play that's going to get handed over to Mo, and he's going to have to trade over to Attacker, but that means that Attacker is not going to have many grenades at all, whereas somebody wants to go for the M4 as well, so he's only going to have a flash and a smoke to back that up. It's a bit of a touch and go by here, but this is something that plagued... Well, actually, I mean, I'm thinking different games now. This is something that plagued Dignitas when Godsent yeah. were able to constantly have money for nades on that CT side with the retakes. Cloud9 now have a chance to just reverse that sort of situation. If they can keep Tyloo from getting full buys with full nades, they're going to have an edge. But Captain Moe's going to pick up one kill. Attacker close to pit, shuts down automatic as well. Now Fancy alive on stairs, trying to bring it back here. And Captain Moe, everybody just wrecking right now. It's Shroud somehow, the last man alive, and not for long. Dominant round coming in here from Captain Moe. Yeah, very well done. Tyloo winning the first two fights, that's so important. And just to follow up on when you were talking about with the grenades, I think Cloud9 could have guessed that Tyler wouldn't have had that many grenades, and yet they choose to push, you know, really early on when they still have all of them. If you wait out the first 40 seconds of a round like this, you're going to push into a push that had no grenades at all. They would have had nothing to, to do anything with, so that's a bit of a, maybe a miscalculation for Cloud9, or maybe they were trying to catch them off guard. Regardless, it didn't work out, and now they're going to be back to just pistols here. Tyler are very close to doing this, and that would be just a huge win for them, obviously. Massive. Both of these teams right now, standings-wise, are 0-1 on the second day here of this tournament. So, like we've said, you need three wins to go through to the major, three losses, and you are out. If Cloud9 find themselves in a position where they're 0-2, with some of the firepower that's left in this tournament, well, we just have to point that out. Envy, G2, you still have the likes of them to go up against in the loser bracket. Ooh, not, uh, not enviable. No, and I mean, we knew this coming into it. Everyone saw what teams were in this. When you when you realized what the format was like, we knew that there were going to be teams that were heartbroken. I mean, this it's it, it will happen. There were some people are going to be leaving this arena crying. That's for sure. Twentieth round is coming up here. Nothing holding alone outside of the A bomb site. While well, they're bringing the bomb over to B, and I'm a bit confused. Nothing has a, a smoke and a flashbang. Do they do they think that will sell the fake? If Ty Lu buy this fake with one smoke, I'm I don't know what to say. No, it should never be a situation, right? This this is an element 
where it comes in for teams where you're counting grenades. Obviously, how many come through? That should tell you something. Somebody falling back, playing it pretty well. Getting back onto the site. Not going to find the second kill. Attacker is still alive on short, however. He's going to pick up two. And that buys the time for the rotation to come in from DD. Attacker picked up somebody, actually. He got, oh, what? A Tomatic getting the kill on DD. Can't find Fancy. If he had, who knows? Nothing is going to be going down. The aim punch too much. And Fancy ends up with a double kill. A very confusing round. And one that nearly worked out um, for Cloud9. That's so much damage being put into Tai Lu. That's a big look, hit to their Look market. at this. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. Walks in front of him. Ah, uh, well. Uh, that's that's just well, well shake your head whatever it happened move on don't think about it too much you still have money for a full buy but yeah 12 to 8 four rounds separating the teams and cloud nine get their full buy now as well so we have the molotovs incendiaries everything that they need here and an awp on skadoodle and he's gonna take it to top mid but it's delayed or not where is he going be apartments early yeah he changed his mind i think this is interesting because we know Tai Lu do all this research into their teams and really try and find out who, they, who they're playing against and, and you know, how to anti strat them, as we say. Um, so is it possible for Cloudland to throw, throw in something that they haven't done before? You know, just they have to think about what could they have looked at in demos, what kind of information must they have on us on this map, yes. and try and play outside of that, which is not easy. It's very hard to do on the fly. Um, you end up playing in patterns even if you don't know it, and it's really hard to step outside of it. So. I'm curious here if Tyler are going to have anything planned. Well, early start. Exactly. Attacker alive. Stewie's going to find DD. That opens it up, but they checked ladder. They might not worry about the man coming up behind him. Attacker with the big flank. Two kills from short. They lose somebody up in apartments, but Captain Mo takes a shot on Shroud, and it's a one on one, and Captain Mo is so far away. Somehow, somehow, Cloud9 just get all the entries. If it wasn't for Attacker getting this perfect flank, it wouldn't have worked. We would be looking at Cloud9 just plowing through onto the B site. But this is, this is what I mean when it comes to, or what I mean, haven't necessarily said it yet, but Cloud9 are a team that lives and dies by headshots. One on one, he spots it out. Skadoodle gonna miss the flick. Still behind the bench, he tries one more time. Captain Mo inching ever closer now. The grenade gonna go in, but great movement from Skadoodle. He's moving out of this position. Captain Mo, can he do anything at this point? He can't, he's no idea. That's a one on one battle. That's won by Skadoodle entirely based on movement. That, that's, and that should be in a textbook somewhere. It's so smart because he knows as soon as Mo goes all the way right that he has a moment where he can get out of that position and it's very hard to guess where he is from that point on. He could be anywhere. That's smart play. 12-9 is the scoreline and they're gonna buy anyway. Yes, is this real go. life? They took this risk in the first half, Tyloo. They gambled. I mean, only three rounds separating you. If you lose this round, you're on a round of eco. Cloud9 will get a chance to close the gap. But Tyloo, this is... Another element of a team that is just going to do everything it takes to win. Sometimes you have to go for the risks. You have to be willing. You have to be daring. See, I was a fan of it in the first half. And maybe it sounds weird, but now I think it's too much. They have the lead on the CT side. They don't actually need to take this risk. They could just give Cloud9 the 10th round and then move on. You know, then they could all buy and it would be great. Captain Mo. He's spotting it out, but he's got to be careful. If he looks the wrong side, Skadoodle is going to pick him up from the other side instead. The Molotov is going to cancel that duel for at least a moment here. I I don't I think it's I think this risk is too much for Tai Lu. I don't think they are under enough pressure to warrant this risk. Oh, and now Skadoodle's got the angle. There's no utility. What? Oh, that's that's not really that. Scott needs to hit that shot. That should be a hundred percent shot right there. He's got the angle. There's there was no utility there to give Captain Mo the chance to step into the angle when Skadoodle would be flashed, for example. That what? needs to be a shot that Scott hits every time. I wonder if we'll see the replay just because I have no idea how he didn't get it. Shroud gonna get run over by somebody. He was saw him coming already, but he just wasn't aware, wasn't ready with the with the rifle. Fancy, look at his position. They have a Molotov on nothing, so maybe they could actually burn him out of this corner. If they don't check it in the middle of all this chaos, this one play for Fancy could be huge. Oh no, the Molotov. It's actually gonna bounce in instead. Nothing using it to check Shadow. Now it's a three on three. 24 seconds left. Where is that bomb plant gonna happen from Skadoodle? It's gonna be walking onto the site with the AWP. Captain Mo. he's in CT spawn. The bomb plant, nothing goes down. Now Fancy coming out of his hiding hole, but Captain Mo picking up the kill. Stewie now in a one on two. The bomb is planted. He's walking in. He loves to find the timing. Somebody gonna get the double kill and that will be Tai Lu with another massive risk to buy in the round, and they make it work one more time. That's a bitter pill for Cloud9. In the force buy, it works. Getting so hype on Tai Lu as well, and Mo was the linchpin for me in that entire situation, holding from CT. 
that they actually managed to get in there. I mean, the fact that Fancy gets a kill with the P250 is ridiculous in and of itself on nothing there. But the fact that Mo is able to step in, get that kill, turn it into a 1v2, put the pressure back on Shroud. Big plays coming in here from Ty Lu, and now they're three rounds away. They've nearly broken Cloud9's back. Cloud9, it's a half buy or nothing at this point. You can't force when most of your teams have $2,000. The timeout coming in from Cloud9, though, I do like to see this. They are not a team that really goes for the timeouts that often. No, they're not. Um, in fact, that's been a problem for them in the past, hasn't it? That they just uh, keep playing forever and ever. But um, I mean, they took two of them versus FaZe yesterday. So, I mean, still, you're taking two timeouts. Some teams don't even take any at all. So, I mean, uh, okay, maybe I'm throwing them a little bit under the bus there. Question is, and actually, they're going to force up. Look at this. Cloud9. Oh Scrappy. Let's go. It's four tech lines, one AK, and it is now or never here. 13 rounds for Tai Lu. They've gone for two big gambles in this game, and it, the, both of them have worked out. That won't happen every time, but when it does, I mean, the result is definitely here. A big stack out B, look at this. They have three people early on. Tai Lu actually expecting there to be a B rush. That's interesting. This is really, it seems like Tai Lu's go-to strat. Yeah, but look at how well this is read. It, that's exactly what Cloud9 are doing. Now the question is, can Cloud9 even make it through the hail of grenades that's going to be coming in any second now? DD falling back. There's the Molotov coming out. Attacker turning around. He's going to be going down. DD will get a quick double kill in return, trying for a triple. He nearly gets it done. And somebody's still hiding back here. Cloud9 now they realize, but the backup is coming in as well. Somebody picking up a kill and Fancy helping out. And that will crush the push. 14 to 9, 22 kills on somebody. Wow. I'm just trying to burrow into my chair. Like, I'm scrunching down watching this happen. Cloud9, I mean, Didi saves the day. Attacker expecting the flash turns away. That's the perfect opening for Cloud9. Didi, though, just saves it completely with those two kills. What a turnaround from Tai Lu. And that was a gamble from Cloud9. They don't even get a bomb plan, Anders. They don't have any money. Now it has to be the round of eco, and they're going to have to play for overtime. Six rounds in a row. Well, anything is possible. It's still P250s. This is CSGO after all. We've seen crazier things happen. But still, Tyloo should be able to crush through this round and get up onto match point. Deep breath on Cloud9. I don't even I can't even imagine what their faces are like now. We saw how they were at the beginning of the half where, where they still had a, a good chance to make it back in the game, but they weren't really looking great at all. Now they must be devastated. There's no armor left. Trying to make it into Connector, which is a good idea. Stewie will be going down, and Didi swapping out for the FAMAS. More bullets in that one at the moment. Katsumo picking up a kill, and all on Skadoodle. Going for the kill is not going to happen either. Captain Mo will take him down. 15-9, match and map point for Tyloo. They are about to excite the ultimate revenge against Cloud9 here. They may have been 16 0 last time, but this is a major qualifier, yeah. and the, I mean... It can't get any better than this if you're Tai Lu. It's just even right now for Tai Lu. 22 kills for somebody, 22 for Captain Mo. But then you would think, oh, there's going to be a gap. No, Fancy's up there with 18, 16 on attacker. They're hitting their shots right now. They are really in the zone. Whereas Cloud9, it's still a struggle. Stewie has definitely come back in the second half. He's up into mid double digits now when he was in single, low single at the end of the first half. But it's not enough right now, Cloud9. They need to figure it out. The nades at top mid, good punish. Shroud and automatic taking a lot of damage there. Well, now, I mean, this is what it all comes down to. Match point for Tai 15-9. And Cloud9, they've got that bomb up in B apartments. This time around, there is no stack for Tai Instead, they've stacked A. Well, yeah, stacked A. Four players over here on the side, so you can't say it. Yeah, and to sort of follow up on that, they have somebody pushed up fairly far into the B hallways. The problem is, if he peeks out now, Skadoodle and Nothing are on the other side waiting, so he kind of has to stay here. But still, it means they have some adv advance warning if anything happens which is a bit of a help when you have this kind of a setup. Fancy, can't find the angle through, gonna try again. Right next to Stewie, it's so close now. They're gonna go and check the catwalk and it will be a B push. Somebody, it's all gonna be on him right now. He has to get at least one, preferably two. There's the one dropping the bomb, but Skadoodle bringing it back in. Didi, standing tall, still on the bomb site, down to 49 seconds. He's running through the smoke, but automatic right behind him to pick up the kill. And now attacker and Captain Mo. A very difficult retake about to happen here. It's all on automatic. If he catches Captain Mo looking the wrong way, he's hearing the scopes. But if he actually peeks out and takes down Captain Mo, attacker, they don't know if anybody's in mid. That's why attacker's taking so long to back up his teammate right now. But they're playing this perfectly Cloud9. They're not taking any risks. If automatic goes down due to Captain Mo, Skadoodle's there to go for the peek immediately. Beautiful work. Two kills for Skadoodle, three total in the round. But what's more important, 
Ska, his whole point there is just he's waiting for contact. He's waiting for something to happen with Automatic, and then he peeks in behind it and gets the follow-up shot. He gets both. That's a feel-good moment. But more importantly, that keeps Cloud9 alive here. 15 to 10, and a timeout has been called by Tyloo. Okay, then. This definitely plays into Tyloo. This is their third timeout of the map. And they could buy on two of their members, and if the three of them couldn't, I mean, they could sort of go for a half buy. Again, when you're this far ahead, I wouldn't do that. I just yeah. think it's too big of a risk to try and do it. But Half they've, by. they've proven a willingness to do it in the past. It looks like UMP, yeah. So attacker had 6,000. He's going to be buying a little bit. Half by. Make sure you have the op for Captain Mo. That's my main concern. Ooh, they're, getting, they're getting a little close here. You're spending a little bit too much. I mean, you, you're not going to get that much. They're just trying to set it up, I guess. To just, I, I don't know about the UMP buys. I don't know if uh, this is good, because now you're not necessarily guaranteed that AWP for Captain Mo in the next round. So, I mean, Captain Mo's been hitting shots with that AWP. You kind of want to get it over to him. Yeah, I, I'm tempted to agree. I guess it will... We'll see if it's going to work out based on how well these UMPs do perform. Attacker and DD, look at this. They're going to take both of them into the apartments over here. That's very interesting. And double up on the aggression, but they don't keep going. I sort of wish they had it. But there is a push coming in. Yeah, B Apartments now. Somebody in Captain Mo. Look at this. They're going to collapse into mid right now. Stewie has no idea that somebody could be behind him coming in from underpass. This is all down to timing. Somebody, they might be in position to completely wreck Cloud9. Two players on short, but Stewie peaks just at the right time. Captain Mo finds the shot. Oh, fancy with the flashbang in connector. He's going to go for a bit of a peek already here, but Shroud ready and waiting. Four versus four. Now the bomb being brought back into T spawn. And that's automatic winning the fight. Taking down DD and following up on Captain Mo. Automatic doing so much work for his team. If it wasn't for him right now, they would already have lost this map. And now it's a 2 1 3. And automatic going to keep going. That's the triple kill. He is clocking in at 30 kills here in just 26 round. What a, what a monster that is. Joins the 30 club. There's been quite a few 30 bombs dropped so far in this tournament, five of them total so far in two days. So you got, you've definitely got some players who are stepping up. Somebody, I'm gonna make a run for it with the AK, but honestly, that could have been played even better from Tyloo. They actually had a really good setup in the middle. I think the what went wrong that round was the fact that Fancy, he went for sort of the underhand flash into connector, mm -hmm. whereas I think if he had flashed all the way into middle and then they had all pushed, it would have been would have had much more effect, but um, I guess hindsight is 2020. Sometimes, right? 15 11 going to be the scoreline here. Cloud9 need to push this to overtime. Otherwise, I don't know. They're going to be playing with their backs against the wall for the rest of the qualifier. Uh, this play from Automatic, getting these kills is so huge. If he goes down, then the people running to this bomb site with a bomb suddenly have to stop and you know discuss what they want to do. This guy on the camera here, he's single-handedly carrying. He's got almost twice the amount of kills of anyone else on his team here. Skadoodle is at 16, Stu is at 16, but then 11 on Shroud, 9 on nothing. This is very, very impressive at the moment for him. Oh, yeah, obviously with all the kills in the last round, they were able to get just enough money for that op. So Captain Mo, he's got something to play with. Now he's got that AWP. Let's see, bomb waiting over to the site right now. And this looks like mid control coming in from Cloud9. Could wind up on A. Captain Mo playing Firebox with that off. Uh, that could be interesting, depending on the smokes Cloud9 elect to throw. Yeah, it's one of those positions that can really work out, but it's also a position that means attacker has to be pretty proactive if they if they start to come up off the of the ramp, because otherwise Captain Mo is going to be shut down by the firebox there. So now he's fallen back to the ticket booth. Can he spot him out right at the edge of the smoke? It's so close. I think he has an idea. Without the extra, you can tell it's very tricky to see what's on the other side here. The smoke is fading ever so slowly, and Captain Mo going to be moving up. It's almost like he can sense that someone's on the other side. Now the smokes are raining in, but over at Catwalk, there's a bit of a fight going on, and the timing. How is it possible? Captain Mo all the time, seconds away from getting a kill. There it is, picking up Stewie. Can he follow it up? He's way out in the open. That's what I meant by attacker having to be more proactive. He goes down as well. Nothing with a grand opening into the bomb site. Now it's a four and three. Oh, what a great play coming in from Jordan here. Now the bomb is about to go down. Tyloo should save what they have here. I, unless they can get a kill in the next five seconds, it's better to save it. Man, they have a single kid on Fancy. I think that's why they're going for it. Scott feeling the pressure. DD and Fancy find two key kills. They know where Shroud's coming from as well. Somebody's in position from Murder Hole, and now it's automatic. 1v2. 
Where has that kit been dropped, however? They need to figure it out because they don't have a whole lot of time to play with. DD gets pikes and somebody down as well. Automatic now in position to clutch it. 1v2. The flash to buy some time. DD's picked up the kit. And time is running out here on this bomb. DD gonna hit the headshot with an op. What is this shot? 16 to 11. Ty Lu in the end. They take it over Cloud9 on Mirage. What more, I ask you, could you ask of Automatic? I mean, he had to clutch that one to win it. He ends at 31 kills. But the real story here is Ty Lu defeating Cloud9 on Mirage in the qualifier. And they are now going to be one and one. That's just incredibly impressive. Somebody at 25, Captain Mo at 24. We will have a full breakdown of this match just after the break. Don't go anywhere. Yes, do not adjust your sets. That is a moment of reaction there from Ty Lu. They have just beaten Cloud9. Crazy stuff going on here at the E-League Major Qualifier. We're going to throw you over to Smix now. He's going to do an interview with the captain, Mo, and the translator, Marshall. Thank you very much, Richard. I'm just going to jump right into it. First of all, congratulations, Mo. The last time your team played Cloud9, it was a 16-0 loss. So I'm wondering, is there anything you guys learned from that loss to come into this game and win? Uh, 确实在这一块上面，然后就做了一点准备吧。然后包括这一次打，他们也都是像我们赛前都已经部署过了。Actually, last time we made a lot of mistake mistakes in uh, communication and also the preparation for the game. So after that, we did a lot of work on the preparation and improve our communication. So I think that's the result. Get come to the, this result. And the last time I spoke with you, you also mentioned that you f did feel there was a gap between Tai Lu and these Western teams and that you felt you had a lot to learn. Do you feel like that gap is closing a little bit? Uh, Hashimo 